Hey guys, welcome back to Chemical Studies. In today's video, I'm going to talk about something which has been requested by quite a few of you, which is how I revised for my exams as a university student. For those of you who don't know who I am, I'm currently a third year student on an integrated master's course in chemistry. In both my first and second years, I managed to get a first overall. So I'm just here to share with you how I revised for university exams and hope that maybe some of what I'm going to share today will help you with your studies. I will leave the timestamps in the description box below so that you can skip to whatever sections interest you the most. So first off, let's talk about the months leading up to exams. So what hasn't changed since exams moved online is that for every module, I make notes. I typed notes in first year, then transitioned to writing notes by hand in second and third year. For every lecture, I first watch it and make annotations on the slides if they're provided. Then I'll use both the annotations I made as well as the lecture slides to write out my notes. I don't usually use textbooks, and I mainly just make notes according to what my lecturer says. However, when lectures don't make sense, then I usually first check out chemlibretext.org and I'll check Claydon if it's organic chemistry. If I can't find the information I want from either Claydon or chemlibretext.org, then I'll check the recommended reading list for that specific module. The reason why I tend to prefer to use textbooks as a last resort is that the lecturer is the one writing the exam. So it makes much more sense to base my notes off of their teaching rather than a textbook which was written by someone else. Once my notes are done, I organize them. Notes organization might not sound very important if you aren't anywhere near the end of your degree. But for most degrees which are synoptic and not modular in nature, it's highly likely that you'll need to reference them again and again as you do your degree. If you're interested in how I organize my notes, do check out my Instagram account where I've made a post on this particular topic. However, I suggest that you personalize your own notes organization system depending on how you think you'd access it in the future. For example, if your synoptic exams are divided into organic, physical, and inorganic, then I suggest that you put them in folders by topic rather than by year. So four weeks before the exam, I should have finished all my notes for the term. And that's when I'll create my exam revision schedule and start doing past papers. So I create my exam revision schedule using Notion these days. And what I do is plan when I'll do each section of each past paper and when I'll make my cheat sheets using a calendar, which will also double as a to-do list. In general, I like to do at least three years worth of past papers and correct them this week before condensing my notes into cheat sheets the week after. This may sound counterintuitive to most of you, since what we tend to do is make sure we understand content before we try testing our knowledge. However, here is a short section taken from the book Art and Fear by David Bales which shows why it's actually much more efficient to make mistakes, then plug that knowledge. So the conclusion I've drawn from here is, attempt as many problems as possible in order to fully understand and remember concepts. As much as it kills your confidence to fail, you learn so much more from spending more time doing badly versus trying to revise enough to get a decent mark on your first attempt of a past paper. Now that I've explained why doing past papers before you review your content is better, you may be wondering how exactly you can make sure that you learn from your past paper mistakes. Well, my approach to this depends on the type of module I'm doing. For those problem-solving modules, like coordination and organometallic chemistry, as well as spectroscopy, I note down corrections from questions I answered wrongly, so I can study it and make sure I understand how to get it right the next time. 
If I see a pattern in the type of question I keep getting wrong, then I'll write out a method for tackling the problem instead of writing out the correction again and again. Here's an example of what I mean in terms of transition metal chemistry. So I basically noticed that there was a type of question which I always got marks taken off for. So I wrote out the formula to get all the points I needed. For those recall modules, like biological chemistry, which requires recall of lots of different names, and parts of physical chemistry, which have to do with remembering what equations mean, I tend to highlight the section of my notes which the past paper question answer came from. However, if I find that the mark scheme has a more concise way of explaining things compared to my notes, then I won't highlight that section of my notes, and instead I'll write down what was on the mark scheme on a separate piece of paper. I'll explain why I do this when I talk about how I make my cheat sheets for open book exams in the next section of this video. Okay, so now we're moving on to three weeks before my exams. During this week, I will continue doing past paper questions by module, and by the end of this week, I also usually aim to have finished my cheat sheets. So just to clarify things, on my notes, I have everything, and in my cheat sheets, I have all the problems I need to fix before I go do an exam. I have a cheat sheet for every single module I've done at university. But the way I make cheat sheets has actually changed since exams moved online. So first, let's talk about how I make cheat sheets when exams are in person. When exams are closed book, the aim of the cheat sheet is to help with recall. Therefore, I handwrite my cheat sheets with the aim to remove any extra details and summarize things as much as possible. If you're interested in the process by which a set of module notes are turned into cheat sheets, I actually have a video explaining the process on my channel, which I'll link in the corner of the screen. Now, what I haven't talked about yet on this channel is how I'm making cheat sheets with exams having moved online. In the beginning, I tried doing the exact same thing as I had done while exams were in person. However, because of these new exams being open book, answers required a lot more detail and problem solving compared to previous years. Therefore, I found that I wasted a lot of time in my exam just flipping through my lecture notes to get the answers, and I rarely used those cheat sheets. Therefore, this summer I made my cheat sheets digitally, because that way I can just search for a keyword to find what I need on a page or document. So these days, to make my cheat sheets, I just type up the sections I highlighted in my notes and all the things from the mark scheme which I thought was more concise than my notes, which I had already previously written on a piece of paper while correcting my past papers. Now that cheat sheets are done and most of the past papers have been completed and corrected, exams will be two weeks away. At this point in time, I review all the corrections I have made so far and check to see if there's a pattern in my mistakes. For example, is there a specific topic I struggle the most with? Or is it a specific type of question or calculation which I have trouble with? In order to plug that knowledge gap found, I do workshop or tutorial questions as well as try the questions I got wrong again. I also cross out any corrections to questions which I no longer find challenging, so that I don't have to review that again. When exams are less than a week away, I like to do the most recent two years worth of past papers as mocks. I do these papers in one go instead of splitting them up by module to attempt individually. This is because in an exam I'm under a time constraint, so I need to practice writing answers out with a hand that's aching and about to fall off. I also like to start the exam around the same time as the actual one to help me get used to doing exams at that time of day. Then the day before the exam, I don't do any practice questions and instead aim to consolidate everything I've learned through getting a piece of paper and trying to incorporate my past paper corrections with my cheat sheet content. I tend to do this because less than 24 hours before the exam, I'm usually the most burnt out. Therefore, I try to make my revision more fun by making an aesthetically pleasing looking mind map of sorts. 
And with that, we've reached the end of this video of me blabbering on about how I study for university exams. Wherever and whenever you're watching this video, I hope it's useful. And I wish you all the best of any exams you have in the future. Bye!